Soup's up. Ding. <laughs> What's up, ladies and germs? Welcome to another tantalizing episode of Requiem for a Tuesday. It's your boy Adam Pecora here with Mr. Justice. Hello. The chef. Here we are. He's back. We made it. He did his homework. Homework is done, as, bitches. As he coined it. That's true. We <laughs> had a lot of homework. I flopped the last assignment, but this time I feel like we're coming in. I, I for the record, still have not seen Avatar. It's sad. Ah, <laughs> you bitch. It's sad, but what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the only thing that we Go missed. see it eventually, I suppose. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's got to happen, but Justice is back. You got you'll a lot. really like it, I think. I'm sure I will. Yeah. yeah. Uh so we got a lot to get into today, but first, let's plug it up. Shall we? Punchjustice.com, microwaveminutes.com, punchjustice.com. There's another one. No, that's it. That's all we have right now. That's all Justice has right now yep. at uh Justice. <laughs> How do you spell it? I J U S T I S. That's your at. No, but that, there's not that many in Chicago. That's our, and that's our demographic right now. So, got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's if I, um, I think if you're going, if you listen to this, that you know, it'll probably come up in your in your feeds. Well, you know where else it'll come the way up. That it works. Linked in the description below is my links. Always are rate you review know? subscribe. Rate review subscribe. Apple, Spotify, Multiplex, Multiplex, Wolfax. Also Apple, Spotify. Bangers, bro. All the way across the board. It's all good shit. Except the album where I sing. No, dude, that album Johnny Bananas, bro. Great it's, album art, good it's not, direction. It's not what it's called. I know it's the vel- yellow velvet rug band, but it's that's correct. That's Johnny Bananas singing. That's yeah, not, that's not Adam. Bacora. No, that wasn't me. For it's sure. pretty sick. I transformed. I'm not even gonna. But lie. I didn't transform into somebody who's good at singing. Unfortunately, I'm not even gonna lie, dude. I run that one back the most. Do you? It's so fun. It's fun. It's a very wonderful tale of like an alcoholic <laughs> showman. And it works really well with, honestly, the whole instrumental thing going on. Yeah, it's just imagine if I sounded good. It runs parallel. It would be a lot better. <laughs> it runs parallel to, like, the Arctic Monkeys thing about the casino on the moon or whatever. Like, I feel like we would play in We that did casino. it first. <laughs> Is that true? Twenty. Let's check the years yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. Hold Ch- on. 2017? 2016? I can't remember. What is the name of theirs though? You, I feel like you. I like, like that record. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. It's good. Hold on. I don't on, remember on, what it's on. called at Multiplex all. Multiplex Yellow Velvet Rug Band 2018. Uh huh. Do I have this even saved in my thing? Hold on. Arctic Monkeys. You probably don't because you wanted to forget. Tranquility it. Base Hotel and Casino, also 2018. We need to go to actual release dates. <laughs> Theirs was May 11th. I think they got us beat there. Yeah, Let's I think see. so. We we always do later releases. May what did I say? May eighteenth. Yeah. Multiplex Yellow Velvet Rug Band, December eighth. Yeah. It's almost like we completely ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. No, it's okay. I feel like that their album. Ours is like the gritty that. reboot. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the eight bit version. <laughs> Our, yeah, well, ours is the DC Snyder cut version. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so lots of good stuff linked in the description below link tree slash our fat link tree slash. I feel like Tuesday specifically yeah. for podcast related endeavors. There's merch our fat dot big cartel dot com. It's all there. It's this, all there. The lots of good. Gets bigger and there's bigger. just so much. It really, it really. Does. And that include it, it, all of justices microwave minute stuff all linked there as well. When's the bagel deli stuff happening, man? Uh, We'll see. <laughs> Adam's making his own bagel deli. <laughs> Not correct, but either way, on hold to say the least. <laughs> I need like a month off yeah, to get that's it going. True. That's, that's true. like the problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm just too, too tired. Yeah, I'm a sleepy little guy. Get real tired. Yeah, yeah. But first, I'm talking about Top Gun. Okay, yeah. So, if you listened last week, that's great. We had a welcome blowout. back. Yeah, and right after there was a blowout in person. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, literally as we stopped recording, Demar Hamlin. It was Hamlin, a bad Sunday, honestly. Horrible Sunday, tragic. It was Monday. Oh right, Demar Hamlin. We are recording on a Sunday today. 
that's why the confusion made sense. Uh, <laughs> was literally being driven off in an ambulance the second we walked out of the room, and it yeah. was like, oh shit. Like, what did we miss? The game had just started. We missed it by like a few minutes wrapping up last week's episode. And so we missed the whole thing, and then it was just crazy. And, you know, thankfully, he seems to be recovering very well. So, and I Shout also out recovered to Mar- well because I watched Top Gun, but <laughs> okay, I, so anyway. I actually have a crazy story. Something okay, that's well, never fucking happened to me before. Jesus, because of Top Gun, okay, Maverick. Well, <laughs> But, oh, Jesus. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm literally not. So last week, uh, that was on my docket, and I figured, fuck it, I'll just run it. And so now it's only fair that Justice does his own version. So if you didn't listen last week, go ahead and listen to that. It doesn't need to be in any order. You don't need to pause it here. But Justice, take it away. Um. So after the blowout last Monday, I <laughs> don't call it a blowout. What does that mean? <laughs> um, I was like, I I gotta I gotta watch this movie now, like as soon as possible. So I get home. It's like Tuesday morning. The episode I don't even think had come out yet, but I was adamant to get in there and to take care of it. Um, I downloaded off of Pirate Bay. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you it was on Paramount Plus. I don't have Paramount Plus yet. But and I can... also don't have a VPN. <laughs> so. But you couldn't. It was like it had one of the most you downloads. Have just, I was like, you, oh, for sure. That's you couldn't easy. have just asked around for. I didn't. Who do I ask? I'm not going to. No, I didn't ask around. I you couldn't, couldn't have went in one group chat and been like, yo, who has Paramount Plus just trying to watch Top Gun? I'll sign out after. You it was like like that. I, it was early. I was like, I'm just trying to watch it like ASAP. I will say also, just so you feel better. I do have a virus on my Google Chrome on this very computer we're using. I, th- I don't know what it was from pirating, but something for sure. So, but I don't think it was a movie. I think it was software. Um, it won't go away. Can't get rid of it either. It's about ten thirty when this happens. My girlfriend wakes up. Hannah wakes up at uh, like uh, right after as I started watching the movie. This is eleven a.m. Eleven uh, eleven fifteen ish, right? Okay. She pops her head in and she's like, "What are you doing in here?" Because I never watch movies in my room. Because I never am. I guess I never. What do you mean really, your room? Like in my studio, in the studio. Okay. <clears throat> where you can watch Wanker Wave minutes right now. You can go and check it out. Check That's it where, out. Where it all happens, um, dude. Microwaveminutes.com. Yeah, seriously. Um, I'm hanging out in there. Stereo. It's because I wanted to listen to the stereo because it's like I don't know planes and shit. Like I want to hear that. Oh, in my you face. gotta have a right. good speaker. So I wanted a good setup for it. And I fucking, I loved it. I loved every, like, it was, like, 15 minutes in. I think Hannah, like, started, we, like, had coffee. We had started drinking coffee. And she starts going to get ready in her room. And she's like, (laughs) Justice, did you download Top Gun Maverick off the internet? I was like, (laughs) what? She's like, Comcast just sent me a copyright infringement email. (laughs) You instantly got dinged <laughs> blacklisted by Fucking the FBI. immediately <laughs> immediately like i was like dude what the fuck i mean to be fair tom cruise had it on the shelf for like two years because of covid he wouldn't let it go streaming so there's no chance he's letting the pirates get it oh bummer i mean like <laughs> there were a lot of seeds as all i'm saying for what i got so it was going around it's been going around tom i'm telling you right now but <laughs> regardless that fucking well, I can't remember what, uh, like, okay, so it was, I had downloaded, like, two things at once. It was, like, Top Gun and then, like, one other thing. It was, like, oh, Disclosures, album, Settle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why? It's Is that anger. not streaming? There's also, there's a song called January, and I wanted to listen to it. Is it unavailable it. streaming? No, I wanted it to, like, I wanted to, like, play with it, like, in Ableton. Okay. So I needed, a de- like, just a file of it. Uh-huh. I could have just done it another way. I don't know. How. Any other way. <laughs> YouTube converter. Who cares? Right. 
Um, so they found that too. Two dings from the same company, I think. Wait, too. you got dinged to get you got dinged for the disclosure ten, album? Ten minutes after the top gun. That was the thing. They found me, man. I was like, what the fuck's going on? So I deleted it off my computer. I was like, tell them I deleted it. <laughs> like, that's not how that works. I was you like, could get fined potentially for two in one day. It's not good. You it, wanna only have one of those infractions like a year or something. Oh, dude, I'm fucked. I'm fucked for sure. Was it worth it though? For the fifteen minutes I got to watch Top Gun, yeah. Wait, you didn't? You panicked and deleted, I deleted it, it and didn't watch the rest. Correct. So you didn't see it. No, I did, man, because I got Paramount Plus. That's what I did. That was afterwards. You paid for it? Like you just got the trial? No, I'm just paying for it for a month. There's wasn't a free trial, or you used it already? I already used it already. Oh, for um. But you have like eleven email addresses, though. Couldn't you have tried another one? No, I just didn't. I wasn't even gonna try. So no matter what, uh, what was I gonna do? Get another season assist for fucking Paramount you know or how something? How aggressive you were when I said all you need to do is get Paramount Plus, and you're like, how am I gonna get Paramount Plus? All you had to do was what you ended up doing anyway. So you just wasted a bunch of time, and now you're gonna go to prison. Prison? Why are you telling me prison, man? Piracy is a federal offense. They're not going to take me to jail. They will when you don't pay your fine that you can't pay for. What is the fine going to be? Probably $150,000. I do not believe that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe that. What if it was $1,500? bucks? i would tell, I'd be like, hey, like I'll pay it, but I can't pay it all. I'd be like, yo, I will buy the deluxe edition Blu-ray. Of Top Gun? Yeah. Like, is that fair? Can we call that even? <laughs> you know? That's more than I would have paid for the ticket. Um, dude, the movie though, fucking amazing, isn't it? It was so good. I told you, it was. There's nothing to not really like about it. Though the way that they, you know, the way that they worked in his character, Val Kilmer's character, Iceman, it, with the texting was weird. But I'm glad that they did something in person. You know it, what had I mean? like it, I, it had to be. There had to be They could have left payoff. out the texting shit because it was just kind of goofy. The way it was presented alone, right? Like it yeah. was just like, what's happening? I like overlays, like we talked about, but it um, looked that like, was just like goofy to me. It looked like how you would film. Like I don't know how to explain it, but like that would be the 1980s guy solution on how to show texting in a movie. Yeah, you know, it yeah. just seems like an old guy made that decision. Um, you know what other? But yeah, old guy if it didn't pay off with an in person, made good, better decisions. Robert Redford for a river runs through it. <laughs> We're not talking about that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day I'll get my classics channel. <laughs> this guy saw one fucking movie that has a prestigious name attached, and it's now he thinks a he's this like cinephile. Movie. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to Top Gun. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking beautiful movie. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, dude. Um, the stress of the the G force every time it happened, dude, I felt like a little. Oh, like, when the dude passed out, room. dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. When he uh, what was it called G shock or something? G yeah, fallout or something. I don't remember. Yeah, something. That was wild. That was I was so stressed out. I'm never that stressed out in movies, but that shit was. It was just. It was because of how good the planes looked. I mean, dude, it's like Star Fox it shit cool. they're doing in that movie. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anytime they were like barreling towards each other, it's just like it looks so dangerous. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's so dangerous. They're fucking fighter pilots, dude. It's yeah. crazy. It took. It took and it's like they did. They took, like I said, like all the nostalgia elements they took from the original were all the right ones and none of the wrong ones. You know, like the music was vintage and cool. Yeah. They took like the same style, like sunset planes rolling by. Like they redid some of the like iconic shots, but it was a completely new movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like they didn't just do the same movie again, although they still kind of did. Yeah, but like everything about it's co they're completely different movies, which I appreciate a lot. Like they put a lot of effort into doing this, like fine tuned correctly. The score was uh, fantastic, uh, amazing, fantastic. I loved, I loved the Lady Gaga song. It was so it was perfect, so good. I didn't like the song without seeing the movie. To be honest, I I'd never really listened to the song. Sometimes until. you need the context. You yeah. really do, unless it's LCD white noise. 
Yeah, that I song wish fucking I, rips. I wish I only knew the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking piece of shit movie. The song could have could have existed on its own way better, you know. Yeah, it'd be better without the connection because yeah. the movie's so bad. They'll, they'll never play it, you know. That's what that means. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's not cool. <laughs> right. They know he knows too. He's like, "God damn it." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "I fucking trusted you, Noah." Anyway, he's like, and you put Adam Driver in the movie. Adam Driver's awesome. We're not going to you're not going to get me to agree on that. Didn't you watch Girls? Uh, no, he was great on Girls. Um, yeah. Back to Top Gun, though. I do think that you don't want to see Lena Dunham's fat tits. You don't want to see that porky pig body. <laughs> I could get She's down. naked the whole time. Yeah. Girls. Yeah. I can only imagine with a movie called Girls that there isn't tits and ass in it. Right. No, there's a ton. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It c- couldn't be without. Is it, it made by a man? No, it's made by Lena Dunham. Oh, wrote, directed, starred. I don't know if she directs. Okay. I mean, I'm sure at some point she's directed yeah, some episodes. So. But Adam Driver's in it. He I've plays never a, seen it. He's a play. He play. He's in like the whole series, pretty much. It was like his breakout. What role. I was going to say about Top Gun is that <laughs> put green point on a map. Tom Cruise looks like he is just hanging out on the beach all the time, and like they tried to hide it with makeup or something. He was he looked oddly tan and sweaty, like the whole time it was weird. Maybe he's just stressed out and sweaty, you know. I mean he he lives in San Diego or whatever. Yeah, he would be tan. Um, but I really like yeah, his movie. skin I... is unnaturally smooth because he's supposed to be sixty. That's why. His yeah. skin just uh, isn't right. But, I mean, he looks great for 60, but it's an odd look. Yeah. Oh, the ba- one of my favorite parts. I think a little bit of it. He's a little swollen from boozing, maybe. The You know, yeah, he's got, got, he's got that thicker neck thing going on. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he could be look, totally clean. Not, okay, wait. I'm not he saying could he be looks bad. I was just be saying he looks weirdly tan. He looks great, honestly. Like, yeah. Like, what he's doing, you know. Oh, my favorite that thing. That guy, if you told me he was 42, I'd be like, Every time they called him out, they're like, Stop making that face. It's like, it's the only one I got. I'm like, yeah, you're so fucking right, Tom Cruise. Yeah, what a great line. <laughs> oh, Maverick, you you cruise you. <laughs> it was it was great. So enjoyable. That's what I'm saying. It's it just made like, you look deeper at him. You it's know? just like, what's all the pleasures you want out of a movie? It's fun. It's entertaining. It yeah. moves quick. The music's good. It looks good. It's, you know, it's every, it's all the positive check marks. And it's like, is this a masterpiece of cinema? Like, no. But it's a fucking great movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blast. Like, oh, I hate fun. Like, fuck you. There's you know, no way you can't like it. It would so be. Good. I think it would probably end up being a masterpiece if, like, it was. There's just more not little on... longer and like submarines instead of airplanes. You that know? doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's a completely different thing. That's it's what I'm just saying. that it's not. It's a popcorn movie. It's a blockbuster. It's not trying to be, in the same way, like a work of art. Mm-hmm quotes you know like is that what that guy goes for that noah guy noam guy noah bomback yeah like he's making art yeah he's not in his head yeah yeah that makes sense not not in that last movie that was no art it was a piece of shit oh you're talking about white noise now yeah (laughs) anyway so you loved it i dank you big rooster guy fucking dank sauce rooster was um yeah, I liked I I enjoyed it. It elevated, you know, Maverick's role. Yeah, like it made him it, an instructor. You know, it, it was made like some good. real tension. Yeah, yeah, because there was no and the release of that tension was like kind of fucked both of them because they got shot out of the air. The dramatic, right? The dramatic elements of this movie were way stronger. They were forced in the first movie because it was just yeah. two young kids like battling each other. Like him and Iceman just had a feud. Yeah. Whereas this had like emotional stakes. Yeah. It was sa- also just the way, I mean. It was but And then kid. like when he started playing Great Balls of Fire like in the first movie, it's like, come on. Yo, dude, I definitely That's shed magic. a little tear for that moment. It was beautiful. It was pretty sick. 
because he nailed it. You could tell yeah. they all cared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, cared yeah. so much about getting everything right. All the people in the room for that scene were like into it, you know. This is everything a sequel should aspire to be. It was early. That, that scene was early, too. Sitting at the bar, Jennifer Connelly, like all that at once. You're just like, whoa, this right. is awesome. Yes, it's like, I'm here. <laughs> What's the bathroom look like? Man, where are we flying? <laughs> Just like also, uh, yeah, it was very grounding. It was that good opening, you know, good sequel vibe at the beginning. But I honestly, yeah, so dank. It was a dank movie. <laughs> Is that also your movie review system, dank or not dank? That's just all your. I think that's just the whole thing. That's just how you review everything. Yeah. Maybe that should be a segment. It is. Like it's, it's my life. <laughs> microwave popcorn and it's little segment movie reviews. You do like fifteen oh, minutes. That's, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I watch a lot of dumb movies. Yeah, the dumber the better. Yeah, I'm doing the Halo show right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's that on? Like Apple or it's something? Paramount Plus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is it live action? Uh, yes. Is it, it is. bad? the The animation for the aliens tragic really yeah it just came out too it's tragic really yeah <laughs> you think you're gonna make it through the whole thing y yeah because i fucked with those first couple games a lot so i'm willing to sit through that the animation was corny as fuck too for the fucking um the first couple games you know you could try and do it now it looks like that yikes <laughs> It does. It looks like Halo 3 animation for the aliens in this new live action. But it, they had to generate it with the people, so it makes sense, you know. I guess. It's that's, not going to be the that's best. That's embarrassing. I don't think they had a very large budget, you know. Yeah. Maybe they did, and I'm stupid. But... I don't think so. Yeah. Probably not if it's on Paramount. Oh, God. Anyway, let's pivot it's to another Paramount. sequel, shall we? So I, I'll start off by saying that on Paramount Plus right now, they have the first Clerks. Okay. So I did myself a favor and watched the first one. And it's great. Fucking classic. Holds up. It's so good. There's some moments when you're like, wow, these yeah. guys are really just rapid fire reading lines and yep. this isn't a conversation. But it's like, given the context, it's like, this is an incredible achievement and a really good movie from just some guy. Classic. That's what I would define. Like, it's got its ups and downs, but it's in, the things that were good in it, so good. Absolutely. I uh yeah. So the yeah, I guess you can you can start us off. Well, okay. So Clerks 3 had come out and to go to like the in-person screening because they did like a Q&A was like 60 fucking dollars. And just based off of his recent work, I was like there's no way I'm going to pay for this cuz this movie's going to be disappointing. Like there's no way. Yeah. Like Jay and Silent Bob reboot is like an atrocity and should be stripped from the canon of his of all these movies, it was unbearable to watch. And like, I say it as a fan, I want it to be better, you know? And it's like, Oh, you're like all of a sudden Kevin Smith, this guy who's like, I can make a movie for as little money as you could ever imagine. And it's like, well, you're not really making the movie then. You know what I mean? Like you're just stripping back everything that makes it a full movie. Yeah. Yeah. You like how can I use utilize as much green screen as possible? And it's like cuz here's the thing, it's basically like how can I feature my dialogue as much as possible? But like your dialogue's really falling off, dude. So it's like you need the rest. It needs to be a big story or something. Yeah. Like cuz what you're having these guys stand around and bullshit about isn't that funny. Yeah. It's not. And like I've rewatched Jane Song and Pop Strike Back probably more than any of his movies. It's still really fucking funny. And that movie's huge. Like they go across the country. There's a whole bunch of set pieces. They're like they spent a lot of money on that movie. And it's big. So much happens. Yeah. There's explosions. Like it's crazy. It has a really high production value is my main point. Yeah. Like it looks like a real movie. All of his movies now are like below straight to DVD grade quality. It's bad. Like Yoga Hosiers, a disaster. But like Tusk was really good. So it's like he still has it in him. Point being, we watch Clerks 3. It's available to rent. Woo. On YouTube for five ninety nine instead of spending sixty bucks probably wasn't worth the five ninety nine to be honest. But I, I am I agree. a big fan, 
And I'm not one of those people who's like, he, Corks was it, and then everything else sucked. I don't agree with that. Like, Dogma is amazing. Strike Back is great. It's been a minute since I've seen Clerks 2, but Clerks 2 is also... Clerks 2 is solid. Good. It doesn't live up because it's not... It's so different from Clerks, and it pivoted a whole other direction. It's kind of just its own movie with the same characters, but then the ending ties it back real nice. And there's, like, good emotional stuff in it. Overall, I think it's not great, but it's a fine movie. It keeps it's just it not a good sequel to Clerks, I would say. But it's, like, a fine comedy... On its own. And Clerks 3 uh, had been in the works multiple times and had been under the guise of multiple ideas as to what it would be. And Kevin Smith very famously had like a massive heart attack and it like really impacted his life, rightfully so. And that's the main plot of Clerks 3, basically, is Kevin Smith dealing with his heart attack. And it's all very good. Like the concept... Of everything is all nice. So I'm not trying to like. Poo poo on that. You know what I mean? But like. The execution just isn't there. And then. So anyway. After coming from a heart attack. It's Randall. He decides he wants to make a movie. And then the movie he decides to make. Is effectively Clerks. And like all of this as a concept very much fits into like this universe and Kevin Smith's style with all the references and everything like that. But it just doesn't all come together the way that it should. It's not flushed out the way that it should be. And it's all just budgetary. You can just tell like they just didn't have enough money to do everything the right way. And look, if you can't raise the money, I get it. And you still want to make the movie like that's one thing. Sure. But I, I mean, I don't know. It's the makeup was terrible. They look everybody looks like shit. It's bad, and uh, that and it's just shot like the funding, shit. If the funding was like the issue, then I, it has to be because it's. I mean, it's written in that way, and that makes sense. But like, that's the thing. It should be a very low budget movie anyway, because there's yeah. not that much happening. But they, it's somehow even that is way more. Just the quality is just so low. And it's weird because, like, Steven Soderbergh will make, like, six movies in a year and they'll all have, like, $1 million budgets and they'll look fucking amazing and he'll shoot them with an iPhone. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I can't even necessarily say that the blame is all around there. I think maybe just, like, it's just a lack of caring about shit like that anymore. Or if he ever really did and maybe he just worked with better, like, production people and better... ADs or whatever you know who knows I can't explain that necessarily it's not like Kevin Smith was known for like his incredible set design and production and stuff yeah I'm not like saying that but it's just like all of the basic stuff like that is gone like the lighting sucks you know and like it opened with Black Parade but the full song and it was clearly like, okay, we're going to spend a lot of money to license one song. And they set the whole intro of the movie to like a six minute montage. It just went on way too long. But it's like, okay, all the right bones are here. Like you're very clearly like you've got the right way you want to do it. You're ha Same thing like Top Gun. Like you're putting in the right nostalgia. You're trying to set up the new movie. You're trying to do it in an exciting intro montage. But then it goes, it's seven minutes long. Uh, I was hoping that they were going to cut that shit. Like, that's what I'm saying. And there's a cut just... version that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that was ridiculous. But, it, like, you but you get what I'm saying in, like... Yeah. Every All the things you would want are all there, just never in the right way. Yeah. And, like, the thing, the way... Like, I don't know, just, like, his revelation of I'm going to make a movie isn't great. It doesn't really make any sense. It kind of does, but it, it's, like... They don't spend enough time on any of the right parts. Yeah. Like, whatever they spend too much time on is... You know what I mean? It's always wrong. Yeah. Um, and their blow-up kind of doesn't really make sense. They kind of just fight out of nowhere. Like, you know what I mean? It just kind of... It's inconsistent. It shifts a lot. I ain't even going to lie. On the I, th focus. I think the, the performance was not very good either in, the, in a couple of them. In a couple of the scenes, specifically. Yeah. Uh, the blow... Like... The the blowout that they had in their movie, you know, that right. was that shit was really good, 
but up until that like point, while they were filming the last right. one you mean yeah when Dante right that one was good out. that was yeah. good but up until that point he was not it wasn't like the whole no tr- his responses the didn't make any sense with um you know with, with what, Rosario Dawson yeah like that Rough. He, he butchered a lot of that in my opinion and it was like a lot but for see me. what I also wonder is how much of that was like all right we got it cut through just for time, for sake of time and budget, right? Whatever. Right. For whatever reason. Like I'm saying, like, could just be a lack of caring. And, uh, yeah. You... It's like you got, but like the actual story it made sense for what it was to do. It made sense for Jay and Silent Bob to like own the, the video store and have it be a weed store. Like that's all the right yeah. moves, but they are just so off the rails Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, they're so nonsensical now. What, yeah, they have no purpose at all, and they used to be like really subtle characters. I mean, obviously Jay was always screaming. You know what I mean? No, but no, now no, they're but just cartoons. The, I, they I used agree, to be people. But they didn't always have these like. I don't really remember the Jay and Silent Bob. I don't remember it being very good. Number one, I just what I, Strike Back, like that movie he, that they yeah. had on their own. Oh, that movie's great. Um, I it's guess I just great. wasn't really a fan, but they're the, like the way that they're in this movie is only good with the weed stuff. If it was not there, it wouldn't make but any like, sense th- at all. My point is just like they were never these like big cartoons. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he was always a loud mouth, but like he wasn't like a goofball. He was stupid, but you know what I mean. It's just become like so self parodied that. It's like avalanche out of control. Like he's nothing like if you watch the original movie, even through dogma. It needs more dancing. Like the cartoony thing is sure is like kind of from strike back in their own movie, but that's because they needed their own movie. But like, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really think much about James Allen Bob. They did a great job. I feel mm. like like in the way that they were. Also, his teeth are just so perfect. It's crazy. They look bad. He it, looks better than he looked in Reboot because he was like, it was hard to look at him in Reboot. Why? Uh, his nose was just like caved in. Oh. It looked really bad. But the teeth, yeah, big distraction. But that's what I'm saying. It's like y'all couldn't have done anything about any of this yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> seems like basic, like, makeup shit. The makeup was fucked. It was so bad. Um, and he's like, oh, well, I could just have my fucking aunt do it. She's a makeup artist in New Jersey. Uh, I say 7500 bucks. And it's like, yeah, cool. Not really. Like, your movie looks like shit. Or like when they did the audition scene and it was just a green screen curtain thing. Yeah. And they did all those cameos. It's like the quality of those looked so bad that none of it could be funny to me. Yeah. Because it's like, y'all couldn't have just gone to an auditorium and filmed this? And yeah. I know why the answer is no. It's because they did it all through Zoom or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Ben Affleck didn't come down to wherever they were. I don't imagine. That makes sense. That's how they got those people, probably. That's a bummer. But if that's not the case, then why does it look that bad? I didn't that think that, that cameo stuff was, like, that good. I laughed, but it was like... It wasn't that good, but the way it looked made it less good. Yeah. It would have been better if it seemed like they were actually in person. There were a few scenes like that where it's like, are these guys even actually together in this scene? They did that a few times where it's like they clearly filmed these separate. Because there were also times where like uh, Dante's reaction shots didn't make sense to what Randall was saying. Like when he was in the hospital bed, Mm. they cut back and forth and it wasn't together. Like, it was very clearly one of those things where they're like, yeah, we'll just edit it and post. Just film some reactions, you know? And they just didn't have what they needed. Like, you could just tell. There's really basic shit like that where it's like, how is this happening, man? You've been making movies for fucking 30 years almost now. How are you degrading this far? It's just sad. It's sad. Like, I would get it. Because well no, here's the thing. I don't get it, no matter what, because clerks you made completely independently on your own. So just because like the the excuse can't be a studio won't give you the budget you need, sure, because maybe you need a big one. But if you're getting any kind of funding, you made that. All you talk about is how you made that movie for so cheap. Yeah. 
But but like now you're talking about making all these movies for cheap and they look like ass though. That movie's at least on black and white film. You know, it might be low quality, but it has a look to it. Yeah. That makes that okay. These movies are shot in like 4K but look like shit, so it's way worse. Yeah. You know? Like cuz that that doesn't add up. I it's frustrating. It's frustrating. I like I liked the bones. But that's it. A lot of the execution just wasn't there. A lot of callbacks, you know, it was fun. It was fun for that. Yeah, for sure. Uh the emotional stuff worked. Yeah. It was a good way to angle it because these th- I hope that that's it though, to it, be honest. It has to, No, it is. It has to be. I don't want to see another I mean, one. We can spoil it. Nobody's going to watch this movie. We're trashing it anyway. So he died that's at the true. end anyway. Uh, yeah, that's... Dante died. Right. With I think like most of the time, most of the movie I was expecting Randall to keel, keel over because oh, of really? how self-centered he was. Yeah, I felt like that was going to be like the way it, like it comes back around to him again for being such a dick, you know. Oh, that he would just have another heart attack. Yeah, but so it threw me off, but then when it happened, I was like, "Oh, that's." I mean, I really will. Sad, I will actually. also say it didn't make sense for him to blow up at Randall while doing the dialogue that they were rehearsing because it it's completely like, goes against his character too. I feel like well, he, no, he's the I guy just that mean, wouldn't do anything with customers present, so he wouldn't have started yelling, in my opinion. Oh know? well, no, he's done that in each movie, so that does make sense. But my point being, like. You knew you were acting and filming, so that's why it doesn't make sense. Because like you knew the lines he was gonna say to you, so for them to actually make you mad doesn't make sense. Yeah, you know, especially because it's literally based on the exact dialogue that happened in the first movie when you did then fight in the exact same scenario. So it was just like, yeah, a little not that well thought out, but whatever. Yeah, the, I was disappointed, but I knew I had low expectations. But still, it was like I did not have low expectations. I was, oh, well, that's because you haven't seen what he's been doing lately. Yeah, yeah. try and watch James Lump out reboot. Uh, unwatchable. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Think unwatchable. That. Yoga Hosers. Unwatchable. I wouldn't watch that. I Un- saw that. I didn't realize that that was by him. Unwatchable. What is that about? Un watchable word okay it's about sausage nazis attacking girls that work at a convenience store wow they're terrible it's terrible that's in honestly and they will it looks bad like as bad as it could look (sighs) poor makeup too again well it has special effects because there's a little sausage nazi zombies that's awful yeah it's bad but tusk looks great don't get it. That was a while ago now at this point, too, but still. Yeah, I got to watch Tusk and Dogma again. Dogma's so good. Yeah. Love Dogma. Anyway. I, I think I laughed the funniest at Ben Affleck's scene, like that cameo. I thought that that was funny, but. You love. Wait, what did you just say? I said I liked uh, Ben Affleck's little cameo that he had in Clerks 3. Like, out of all those cameos, it was that was fine. the funniest one. He was trying pretty hard to be funny. The other ones were trying too hard. A lot. Of, it was cringe. That's what I'm saying. A lot of it wasn't. It was like giving cringe. <laughs> Breaking news. The Bears officially have secured the number one pick in the NFL draft next year. Wow. Lit. Wow. Shout out to the Houston Texans. Why? Winning, because they won. Damn. They scored a touchdown at the end of the game and went for two to take the lead, and they got it. Damn. So they won. And if they wouldn't have gotten it, they would have lost, and we wouldn't have. Wow, excellent. Amazing. Well, you, know, you heard it here, folks. Requiem for a Tuesday is bringing you breaking news. Ba, 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 ba. It's only going to take a couple days for it to get to you. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's only Sunday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... Football. We got one more sequel to discuss here. Damn, sequel season, baby. Kind of a sequel. Oh, um. With that said, I've 
I didn't watch um, Knives Out, the first one. But you saw Glass Onion. But I saw Glass Onion. You don't really need to have. I didn't think so. But that's is it why the same Ra- thing? That's why Ryan Johnson was pissed that they put that in the title. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, it's an independent movie just with the same character. The idea is that it works like the novels that it's like referencing, you know, those like murder mystery ones where the same detectives in every book. It's like Sherlock Holmes type shit. Got it. Every Sherlock Holmes book has Sherlock Holmes, but none of the other people is are the Blanc same. Is Blanc the, uh, the main? Yes. Okay, got so it. So he's the detective in the first movie. Got it. And they're much different from each other. So uh, that... They're completely different from each other. the next one other. they're going to do uh, Knives Out, ex- whatever the title is, or Glass Onion, whatever the title is, since they can't get it right. <laughs> yeah, right. The next one's called A Glass Onion Mystery. <laughs> right. It's like, okay. Um, I loved it. It was very fun. Very fun. Uh, it was... Uh, and incredibly well directed. It's like James Bond Goldfinger for like Nintendo vibes, you know? It was like that kind of action in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. That kind of well, excitement. That, that's kind of, that's how the first one is too. The first one's a little more like uh it's family drama, like a real like an old money family. Oh. So there's more like backstabbing and more it's more like Close. It's a different kind of deception. It, it's yeah, it's more it's more close quarters. It's it's all in like one house. This one's pretty expansive inside this is of like the glass the onion. island and all that. Yeah, you got a lot of room to play with, you know. Right, but so like they're very similar in a lot of ways, but very different in a lot of ways. So then, wait, bring it back to the beginning of Glass Onion. Like all, they all of those have the characters. Oh. E- oh well, they're all at different parties. Do you see any of those scenes in Knives Out? Like any of the backstories, like quick ones that we see. No, it. No, I don't remember. Well, that was fun. They're all like arriving to read the will or something. I forgot the I forgot the basis of Knives Out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're either there for like a birthday party or something and then he dies at it. Mm -hmm. And then it's about like the will and stuff. I don't really remember. But no, it's not like something brings them there. There's not like the... Pu- it, this movie's are like a puzzle movie. Yeah. Glass Onion. Yeah. The other one's not. It's just like a straightforward murder mystery. Got it. But they still do like go back and reveal things later. I love that, by the way. That always works for me. When you like... Yeah. Sh- oh, the scene was actually 30 seconds longer. I love that. They did that. In the so we're one. doing spoilers for this one too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So the it's whole it's been plenty of time. The, uh, it's like the number one movie of the sister, like the whole sister piece, like that shit was so fun. Didn't see me. it coming the whole time. No I'm stupid way. as Which fuck. Is, and it's a dumb. A- it's a. I never think about it, but it's always a thing in movies. There's always a twin in some capacity. Every, but that's the thing; it's years, playing you know? on all the dumb shit because then it's so that's why it's so good. It's I'm very like, clever. Oh my God, yeah. Yes, that was resisted the whole time. Well, then because also the reveal about Edward Norton's character is that he's just dumb. Yeah, like yes. they were literally like, this whole thing isn't a mystery. This guy's just an idiot. Yeah, because like, there hired- is there is no twist really. We actually were telling you the whole time that this guy's just a dumb fuck. Yeah. Which I didn't really think about either. No. A few times I did, but I was like, he's too rich. There's no way, you know? But right. But as that whole thing, the separation continues, you're just like, oh, wow. It was great. He's just an idiot. Well, and okay, so I was listening on like the big picture podcast, great movie podcast. They were I forgot what they were talking about exactly, but it was basically how movies now don't reflect the times, which is like, this is like the first generation of movies that have ever really done that. Oh, and it's never just about the present time. It's, it's never like set in the present periods, time yeah. or universe. Right. Right? Like, Marvel movies are theoretically set in the present, most of them. But that's but the it's future But it's a completely sometimes. different... Rea- no, but it's just a completely different reality. Right. It's not rooted on anything that's going on. Like, nothing... Like, there are some things... Any movie that's about something that's thematically relevant to now is set in the past or... It's a Marvel movie, basically. Yeah. But there's nothing that's even like there's not like movies that like reflect fashion or music or anything. You like would, even just visually. You would categorize White Lotus as one of those that do Yeah, it. but there's not, not a movie. There's not a lot of them. It's not a movie. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. 
Like it's not. I'm sure you can name a few examples, but I'm saying overall, yeah. most movies that are coming out don't reflect anything about anything now. Like somebody in 19 or somebody in 2040 mm-hmm. can't watch a movie from 2020 and be like, oh yeah. This is what it looked like. Remember people dressed like that 20 years ago or whatever. Yeah. Even just little examples like that. Not even stuff about like every movie in the 70s was about Vietnam, shit like that. Every bunch of movies in the 80s were about greed and whatever. We love making our movies. uh, But that's not really a thing right now. The 90s right now and, and the 2000s. Right. Everything's a play on either nostalgia or IP. Yeah. Or what's, what's IP? Intellectual property. Okay. Like Marvel and shit. Got it. Yeah. I'll have to rail my rant. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So like my point for all that is, is that's why I'm glad they just had them have masks on at the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's not about the plot. Like I'm also glad that they literally made COVID not a part of the movie right away by right. giving them that stupid shot thing. Right. You know? But it's like, oh, so if somebody watches Glass Onion 20 years from now, it's like, oh, that's because that was when that pandemic happened. Yeah. And I feel like that's a beautiful way to include it in something. Like, because nobody wants to watch a movie about COVID. Right. But movies can be set when people had, like, oh, there's a scene when they go to the grocery store. Maybe they just throw a mask on casually and it's not mentioned at all. Yeah. Just do something like that. Work yeah. it in. Yeah, I I just like that. I think that was very smart. Yeah, I I agree. That that it was it was nice to see. You know, acknowledge that it happened. Yeah, but you know, we don't need to be fucking crying our eyes out here. It established uh, it like pretty different, but it also, agendas it, right away for all of them too. You know, like right, it down, showed you things about who they are, right. and it's relevant because you all of those people showed themselves during the whole masking situation there were people who wore them on their chin or people who wore dumb ones that like had holes didn't do anything people cut right. holes to breathe you know all of that was represented it's a nice little joke and then we just move right on yeah yeah i so, love like, the little t- cool. the snippets of character development throughout was just so fun was my favorite part of the movie actually and like, it's quick yeah you learn something about you learn about somebody for 15 seconds. Yeah, and then the but moment that the reveals ton. started, we stopped getting the character development, and then it was just reveals for the rest of the movie, essentially, every time there was a main story happening. Right. So it was we'll like, tell you exactly the key things you need to know to figure out who these people are, Yeah, and then we'll show you exactly who they are and how it got here. Yeah. Brilliant. Because how much backstory did you need for any of those people? Not much. No. Why are they on this island? What's their connection to the tech guy? Oh, they're rich and famous also. Why are these people all rich and famous? Here's why. Why could they all potentially hate this guy? Here's Here's why. why. Yeah. All you need to know because that's all this movie's about. Fucking glass onion. Dank as fuck. And also just watch that opening puzzle thing. Watch it again. Was amazing. Them all on the phone figuring it all out back and forth and everyone figures out a different little part. And it was just thoroughly satisfying. Whatever that box was, was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the idiot didn't even do it himself, you know? It was just he paid somebody to do it. Right. I love the rich, the billionaire vibe the Which whole time. Which also, when he said that, didn't cross my mind. Yeah. No, I didn't either. I thought he was like a mastermind, you know? Right. That's what you're thinking the whole time. It was it? great. And also, just the fact that, like... uh like Daniel Craig as Benoit then has to act like Benoit's acting the whole time because yeah. he's playing stupid. He's like, oh, I thought I was invited. <laughs> that was, I just kind of nailed that accent right there, I feel like. And that accent, <laughs> I feel like he fucked that accent up at the beginning a couple a times. A couple times. Yeah, but then he but got into it as they kept going. But it's because sure. it was while he was pretending. So it sounded weird, but that's because he was acting. Oh, I understand. Up until they had the private conversation, he had to pretend like he thought he was invited. I get the no. You know I what get I the mean? Confusion part. I just mean like Daniel Craig definitely didn't. I didn't. So, but Benoit, I'm saying Blanc, it made sense for the character because the character was acting. Because Blanc is a British 
No. Okay. That's his accent. Okay. He's from Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. Daniel Craig is British. That's what I mean. I didn't know if the not if like Benoit was No, that's his accent. Got it, got it, got it. No, he definitely broke that accent a couple times then. But it was while he was while the character was acting. No, no, no. All right. I don't think so. I think so. Okay. But it did sound off at the beginning. Yeah, it was the beginning. But I think it was on purpose. Okay. It's just like it's such a meticulously made movie. It just seems like they wouldn't let that go. That's true. But who knows? I also doubt that they shot it in order. That doesn't usually happen. I don't think so. So, yeah. who knows? I love that Hugh Grant was his husband. That was fun. Yeah. Because there were no reveals about anything like that. Yeah. There were no cuts to any personal. Also, that was a good little COVID reference, too. Like him on Zoom with his friends. Yeah. You know, just little stuff. But I'll, yeah. Um, More like his therapist. Am I right? But there was. I needed some help. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Thanks. <laughs> but they, uh, just so you know, they didn't do anything like that. In Knives out. He just shows up. Yeah. And the, the only context is he's a great detective. Yeah. So there was no glimpse into his personal life at all. Glad previously. I saw it on Netflix. I know why now it's the number one. And well, uh, they paid, I wouldn't have seen it in theaters. I'll they paid like $300 million just for the rights to make the sequels. How many sequels? Netflix did? Yeah, there's going to be at least one more. Perfect. But that's just enough. It's it's just really annoying to me that they don't all they didn't also pay for the streaming rights to the first one. Like, I, I remember you, you cannot saying watch that, yeah. Knives Out on Netflix. Where so can like, you watch it? I don't know. I don't think anywhere. You'd have to pay that's to rent so it. That's so dumb. It right. Well, the whole streaming thing is so fucked and stupid because of all the shit like that anyway. But the point is like if you're going to fork over all that cash, pay whatever else you also need to to get the first one. Yeah. Why would you not want to own all of them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. We have two and three. You and know somebody's that like, well, I have one. <laughs> two would have been cheaper than having to. Now there's going to be a workaround for them to figure it out. Because it's more I mean? and like, more what? popular. So that exactly. makes the first one more and more valuable. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. It's a damn shame. Uh, but I'll, I'll I'll find it. It was great. I'll let the people but know where they can find loved glass knives, onion. knives out. I didn't and see not it. get it illegally either ever, or the government will come to you via email for e- sure. Via email, <laughs> they may send a letter too. You better watch out. It's gonna happen in the mail too for sure. Maybe they know that I deleted it. They don't. I could tell. They them. also don't know what you did with it once you had it. This is bullshit. You could have loaded it onto like 150 flash drives and then deleted it. Jesus Christ. Now you're selling those flash drives yeah, for well, then the, you know, $4 a pop? They can come and check my stuff out, but... That's I, $600. I just got a new you know, SD card, and I don't need them coming in. What if you had $600 cash? I, d- I never do, so that would be wild, number one. You think I, I, if I just handed that over to them, they'd be like, cool. Yeah. Don't, don't, nobody try any <laughs> tricks. You here. should try to bribe the FBI. I don't think that they would want my money. I'm not going to lie. How do you know until you try? The FBI just works different, you know? It's just not the same. Like, they just don't take bribes, I don't think. Well. They don't. Well. That's a large organization that, that has plenty of money. And they definitely take some on the side as well. <laughs> More money is always better. That's why I'd have to you find... You think that... The FBI is an honest organization. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, to that the right people. That they're do-gooders? Yeah. Okay. Well. The Federal Bureau of Investigation? Is that what it is? They knew the 9-11 guys were here. You mean who? The what? CIA and the FBI, but they didn't talk to each other. Everybody knew it all could have been prevented. Anyway, we don't need to go down that road right now. Oh, we're getting back into conspiracy. Glass huh? Onion, that's not a conspiracy. That's factual information. Oh, we could be on this for a little while. They literally f- learned how to fly planes in America. Oh, that While I knew being that. On, a tra- on a watch list and nobody did anything. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think we talked about this on whenever we talked about 9-11. Why did we do that? Was it on? I don't think so. (laughs) I don't think we did it on 9-11. I hope not. We didn't. It was very, maybe it was like 11-11 or something, you know. That's fun. Yeah. Make a wish. Right. I I wish it went different. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
But I don't think you talked about that those facts. Who knows specifically? Who knows? I'm sure I did. But it's good. the Saudis. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not even like that. So Glass Onion was great. I Oh, great movie. I, again, just like with the first one, had no idea what was going to happen. They completely got me, and the reveal was that you're stupid because everybody's stupid. And it was like, oh, that nice I'm ex- just as stupid. The nice extension of catharsis when they're just smashing all the glass, I really got into that. That was probably well, one I of knew my the Mona parts. Lisa had to come into play yep. somehow, Yep, that and was that fun. made perfect sense. There's nothing like some good death of art you know, in a movie. It's just like, I love that. Burn it. <laughs> Yeah, the, it was honestly just great. I have no co- same with Top like, Gun. Like Hindenburg, <laughs> you're like, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna explode. Same, great cast all around. Uh, same thing with Top Gun. Like I have no complaints. Just a positive, fun time. I was hooked right away. Makeup was great. Yeah, every well, the cinematography and everything. It looked in really Glass nice. Onion was perfect. Yeah, technically in every way, both of those movies were fucking amazing. Yeah. That well, not the technicality of the makeup in Top Gun was a little iffy, but that was just that one could character. just be old guy. That was just I think that was old guy. You it know? could just be old guy stuff. There was, yeah, I I really, um, the blood is the hot sauce blood, like a little tidbit was just like really good. You know that was that was so yeah, exciting. Yeah, right. All very clever. The reflect the that whole scene that kept panning in on the reflect reflective glass. I couldn't say it. Jesus Christ was just like looked beautiful, fantastic, like an advertisement. Right. It's like, is this a belt ad or a right. gun <laughs> ad or something? Yeah, really, just magical stuff. I loved it. It was a leather glove ad. It looked like leather like, gloves are nice. I have been f- interested lately. Um, I'd like a fur lined leather glove. You know, and have it for like the rest of my life. Oh, One you know, of, like a also real nice sick? pair of gloves. Uh, all the character slates at the end, they were like they had the you know glass or the knives out font, and then like a diamond of the character and like a caricature. Yeah, it was so cool. I was like, oh my god, and I want see, my name like that. It's like I love just all, all the little effort. It was so fun. They go a long way. You got to do the little things. We were just talking about this with football. Score was a little forgetful, though. Yeah. The most yeah. memorable was part important. was when Glass Onion, the song, hit right at the end. Because that was a great cut. I feel like... Yeah, yeah. I, other than that, though... And now it's like, what British rock band song is next? I hope they the next one's after like an Oasis song. Yeah! You know, like, <laughs> cigarettes and alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, but you know what I mean? That would be awesome if Oasis was next. Uh there was a Beatles song in the credits at the end that was okay. Glass Onion. That's what yeah, that's what I that was That's what it's named after. Knives Out's named after the Radiohead song. Oh that's what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> that was was that a Paul song or a Beatles song? It's on the white album. Okay. Yeah. So it's a Paul song. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that could be a Lennon song. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just. I don't it's know. It's a Beatles I, song. I can't it's, tell that's who's you, singing. That's what you're saying. It's on, on any the of their album. like rock songs, I can't recognize their voices. So I don't know. I oh. think that's a Lennon song, actually. Got it. But I don't know. I sound stupid. I'm no, no, sure, no, it's okay. Because, but I'm not a fucking Beatles loser. You know. I just. It thought like, that I remembered a song that you were just talking about. So how do you think I feel? Yeah, that's you know, fair. You're good. That's fair. I'm just gonna look now because it's gonna bother me. Yeah. Um. Other than that, though, yeah, it's kind of the only downside. If I could give it one, it was not dank because of the sound, maybe. But Top Gun, dank. Clerks three. Yeah, it was dank. written by Lennon, but it, as always, they would be credited to both of them. Okay. So we're going to call it a Lennon song. Yeah. I think he... Yeah, and he's also vocals. Speaking so. of Radiohead, do you like the smile? What? The movie? No, no, it's his... It's Tom York's new band. I think there's two other people, one of the other guys. Oh, I didn't band. listen. It's pretty fun. They just did a tiny desk. I didn't watch it yet, but I... Really? Yeah. Isn't that fun? Tom York on a tiny desk? Yep. That's surprising. That's fun. That is very fun. I feel like it'll be good. 
I love Tom York. He's pretty talented. Pretty talented? Okay, he's very talented. Yeah, it, Radiohead confounds me. Confounds me. But, well, because they do, like, really experimental, like, crazy, artistic, noisy at times even stuff. But they're, like, a huge hit. Yeah, it's very interesting. They've only gotten bigger as they got weirder. Yeah. But also they've gotten better. Like, well, I don't know about that. They've just had like seven classic albums. Yeah. Like masterpieces. But the fact that those are so widely recognized is weird. You know? Like in theory, couldn't Strawberry Jam have been as big as... In Rainbows? Right. Yeah, you could argue that. Like, you know what I mean? It's just weird that they're that big, especially. Like, that level. Like, I saw them at the United Center. They sold out two nights in a row. Yeah, it's because they got British distributors, man. They know where to put their fucking That's hands. That's true. British people really know how to they get... They know where to get it. They know how to, like, get Americans to suck them off. Hard. For yeah. a long time, clearly. Yeah, like, Zeppelin wasn't even big in England at first. Right. We just, we love to spend the money in the wrong ways, I think. We just love to spend the money, <laughs> period. We'll buy it. Like, I wonder how much money Tom York even spends in a day. I bet you it's not even that much, bro. Give us some of it. <laughs> he just, like, goes to the... Nowhere. He doesn't go he anywhere. He goes to, like, the corner store and gets, like, a Foster's every it's day. It's bullshit. Cause or whatever. Every celebrity never goes out, probably. You know, it's just, like, dumb. They never, they don't spend it. That's why they have it. Well, they know? go to like nice private dinners. That's... Yeah, once a week. It's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't admit, yeah, Tom York doesn't seem like a big Oh, that guy doesn't go guy. out once a week. He goes out like once every three months. Well, he just doesn't even seem like he would have like nice clothes. Like expensive anything. I really. think tattered and torn, but like art. He, he probably, bought it right. from a designer. That's the thing. He Well, he probably has like really nice art. Yeah. Like really expensive records and like and equipment. Like three fireplaces. He has like a full <laughs> like. He probably has like a multi million dollar studio or something. It's like a tri level in a high rise in New York. You know, it's like some crazy. I shit imagine like that. he lives in London. Oh, well, that's what I somewhere in yeah, like the UK. I don't even know. Yeah, London maybe either. not even London. I don't think London. I don't. Th I don't know if they're even from London. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really know any other places. Like, I could name some, but I don't know where those are. Right. The ditch. Geographically. The ditch and then the hill, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the other places outside of Well, there's, of like, London. Liverpool. Where's that? I don't know. Sodder. In my know. head, it's, like, an hour outside of London, but I could be... <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't either. I, got, I have one... I, got, I uh, still don't even really understand the Ireland, Northern Ireland thing. You know, uh, clearly you don't either. I guess. no, I don't. You're I not don't, even don't. aware. The northern, the difference between north, north and south London. You're saying Ireland, Ireland. No, there's Ireland and then there's Northern Ireland. Those are two separate countries. Ireland is completely independent. Northern Ireland is in the UK, but they are one thing. There's just a border, but they're technically separate countries. Yeah, I didn't even really. They had a civil war. How long ago? I think in the 20s. Oh, so it's like recent. I think so. Damn. Well, it's like... A... The Banshees of Inishirin is set during the Irish Civil War. Did you see that movie? No. Brittany hated it. She thinks that I liked it. Brittany, you're listening. She thinks that I... I'm faking that I liked it just to make her mad. She disliked it so much. I didn't watch it. Oh, is, what is it on? Well, here's the thing. Let me just say for the people listening. We're running out of time here. So yeah. me and Justice have another movie on cue, The Menu, for next week. Oh, damn. I think you're going to have a little more homework, bud. You're oh. going to have to watch The Banshees of Inishirin, and we will talk about that next week as well. Uh, that gives, that, no, that gives you what? no homework, bitch. You know, you need to. Yeah, I already fucking watched it. <laughs> watch more movies. I do. I'm Clearly on Halo, not. though, Yeah, right see? Now. <laughs> fuck off. So I'll give you the. And a river runs through it. Well, how about this? I'll give you the rundown. And you let me know if you want if you want to watch this. Okay, I can get down. And then maybe. if you do, we'll do it on the show. Deal. I think it's good. Here we go. In for the cue. Okay, so. Homework time, bitches. <laughs> set during the Irish Civil War <laughs> on a small island off the coast of Ireland, mm -hmm. but a part of Ireland. 
Okay. Ireland. They got it. <laughs> but a small island off the coast of Ireland. So it's like probably a little bit more like, you know. Secluded. Yeah. And lonely, basically. Outdated. In the 20s. Yes. Yeah. Outdated even for the 20s. Correct. Fuck. They're riding horses. This seems problematic already. Okay. Colin Farrell. What a gar- You mean the penguin? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you're going to be a fucking loser about it. <laughs> He was great as the Penguin, but that movie sucked. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. I talked about it. Go listen to that episode. Anyway. The Batman. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, so Colin not about Mer- the money. Colin Farrell plays a simple man who lives on this island. He, like many of the other people, it's basically the whole island is like a small town. So everybody knows everybody. And it's a very like small, like 40 people or something. Mm. So every day he just wakes up, goes to the pub, gets drunk, goes home, eats dinner, goes to bed, basically. That's what everybody pretty much does there. What a life. Okay. One day he goes to the pub, him and his best friend, he or he goes to meet his best friend. His best friend isn't there. He tries to go to his house. He's not answering the door. And it's like, oh, shit. And then he's like, basically, the guy's like, I'm not your friend anymore. I don't like you. I want to play the violin. <laughs> Okay. And and he's devastated and broken. And the whole movie is him basically trying to win his friend back. And then his friend is like, I'll cut my fucking fingers off if you keep talking to me. And then he starts cutting his fingers off. <gasps> That's a spoiler. Kind of. But then it keeps escalating and things happen. But it's a, you know, it like showcases Irish repression and like how they can't show their feelings and stuff like that. But also just like the isolation. And it's great. Um, very. Funny. I can get down on that. It's good. It's funny mostly. I'm down as you know some. It's like a black comedy. Okay. It's not like It's not like this period drama. Yeah. About Ireland, because that sounds devastating and sad. It's not that. It's like absurd a little bit. Okay. Yeah. It's not like. It's it's weird. It's a little offbeat, but it's good. We got like a lot of blues, low light stuff going on. Pretty much. There's a lot of green because it's Ireland. There's a lot of field, oh, it's like pretty? fields and stuff. Sick. Yeah, a lot of beautiful. I like, was imagining dark and stormy. <laughs> there's a lot of like beautiful oceanscape. The shots are amazing. The landscape is incredible. Yeah, so it's worth it for the landscape for sure. Yeah, I could get down. There's a great. I'll, I'll try it out. There's a great donkey. So, you know what? Great Sign dog. Sign me up. There's great animals in it. You got the menu. Inc- and we got the banshees of what is it? The banshees of Inishirin. Where is that? HBO. Correct. Okay. Got Bo- it. Both on HBO. Got it. So that'll maybe be next week if we can link up. But coming soon, me and Justice double feature. Yeah. To an R fat near you. It'll be good. It'll be good. I hope this was good. Justice, pleasure as always. See you next time, losers. Peace out, losers. We're going to go do some crack cocaine. Yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> Did, the IRS is listening. Don't let them know. The IRS. I mean the FBI. <laughs> you know what I mean. The IRS probably looking for you too. Make sure you get Paramount Plus if you need to watch Top Gun Maverick. Do not pirate it. Don't pirate it. Or don't definitely don't use the top link. Because I'm a little weenie and I don't know how to t- establish. I'm a little fat girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing worse than not getting a VPN but using Pirate Bay. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, just get your shit together. Who's still pirating movies? I don't know, man. That's why I just got don't Paramount Plus. Don't you have, Plus. like, a hacked fire stick? No. Oh, I thought you did. I did at one point. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't have it anymore. Oh. I'm jailless. You could just buy another one of those. Oh, I don't know where to find them. You could probably get them on eBay. I am i don't think they're cracking I'm down on jailbroken stuff. I'm going to stick to the Paramount. Stuff. I got a lot of movies banked from Paramount, too, so I have a long, oh, like, I got a you long got a month ahead of me. You got a laundry list? Yeah, dude. All right. I'm going to watch Chalk a lot. <laughs> Why? Because I'm trying to watch Johnny Depp's butt, you know? Not really. Is he bare ass in that movie? I don't know. Probably. Okay. It seems that way. All right. Let me know. I won't watch it. All right. But let me know. You can do You can do a little Justice's Corner yeah. review. Yeah. Or what did we say? Uh, Microwave popcorn? Pop, yeah. Is that what it was? Mini we review? We could just call it popcorns, you know? It's not what people like a popcorns by Microwave Minutes. By Justice Popcorn. <laughs> yeah. A, a BJ. That's a better it's a title. BJ. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better title. Popcorn by Justice. <laughs>
of popcorns. <laughs> Make it like forty to fifty words long. That's a pretty good title. Make it <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Make it forty to fifty words long. That's what you were doing. Popcorn by Microwave Minutes by Justice, <laughs> sponsored by Orville <laughs> Redenbacher, <laughs> sponsored by Parmesan cheese. I would love that. You like Parmesan on your popcorn? It's just a popcorn sponsor would be fucking. Why don't awesome. they? Okay, why doesn't the movie theater have the little Parmesan packets like you'd get from a Domino's or a pizza, any pizza place? That would be amazing. Can we put that on my popcorn with my goo butter? I don't know. There's a there's a TikTok circling around right now that's basically uh this big fat dude just twirling his popcorn pouring butter on it at the movie theater, and it has the address of the movie theater. Like this is where you can find this guy if you want your popcorn made like this, and he's like. It's like juggling, but with a lar- extra large popcorn. It sounds great. It is insane. I'm like, damn, I want some popcorn, you know? Let's get some popcorn. I'm down. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure as always. We'll see you next week. And remember, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator. <laughs>